please subscribe or like and check out the description of this cute evening. little box. Renee Uert here with uh, Stampin' Up! I'm an independent demonstrator. And I'm Hannah Bird with Hannah Crafted Gifts, also an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And today we're going to be making a beehive box. So here's a sample of one that I had made previously. You can see it says, thinking of you, sweet friend, and has the little bees flying up the honeycomb here. And it's a double-sided little gift box. And if you open it up, it really does open. You can put little sweet treats inside. So in this one, I've got a little beeswax lip balm, um, or you could put little bits of honey or any sweet treat inside of there. So that's what we're gonna be showing you how to make today. We're gonna make a slightly different version because this version uses the DSP from Celebration, the uh, Golden Honey Bee mm -hmm. DSP. And we're gonna make a version without that since soon that will be uh, discontinued. So that way you can continue making this um, even once Celebration has ended. That's so right. we'll go ahead and transition here and show you how to make it. All right. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna be using the Honey Bee Cling Stamp Set as well as the detailed bead dies. And so we're gonna start off by doing some stamping. So I'm gonna start by stamping my hives. Renee's gonna start stamping her bees. And we've got a little Daffodil Delight um, ink spot here. And what are you using, Renee? I'm gonna use the um, Stazon. And um, I um, have tested lately the cleaner of the Stazon and am very happy with it with these cling stamps. So I will definitely use that. And how many bees do we need? We're gonna do two bees each. So if you wanna stamp your two, I'm gonna stamp my two beehives because we need one for front and back. There's one. And then we'll switch. Okay. Um, on the sample I showed you all, I did have three bees. You can put as many or as few bees as you would like. Um, but for this, we're just gonna do two each. Better. And you can see we've already got our dies ready to go. So we'll be using our Big Shot here in a moment to cut out these hives as well as our bees. We are using the little bee die, but this um, detailed bee dies set comes a big bee as well as like a truly detailed bee. This stays on, the key is to clean it off as soon as possible after you're done. So, ooh, that one came out a little dark. I've got room, I'm yeah, just gonna see, try one more. Yeah, and not see, push quite it's as not, hard. Right, there we it comes go. out a okay, little good. differently. So now um, we've got the cleaner nearby. Renee, would you be able to hand that to me when you oh, get a yes. chance? Thank you so much. That. And so you can see actually how nicely it works. It's really great. So you've got this kind of brush tip, I guess, and you just apply that to the stamp and you can see it just starts to basically dissolve that ink away. And you wanna have some sort of cloth, paper towel like we have there, but look how well that's coming off. Normally that would stain pretty severely. And there's just a little bit more in some of these little detailed parts of the stamp. But that is really reassuring that you could use stays on, which is a permanent ink, and that's why it requires a special cleaner to take it off your stamp. Um, but you can still have your stamp look brand new. Now, if you're using this with the photopolymer stamps, you do want to clean it off a little more thoroughly than we are on the cling. So you might actually rinse it underwater and maybe use a little dish soap on it, um, is my understanding, because otherwise that can be corrosive to the photopolymer. But there you go, look at that. You can barely tell we used it. That's fantastic. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So while we're at using the stays on, um, we can start working on our sentiment as well. We're doing all our stamping first. So I'm gonna set aside some of these other things we stamped that we'll be die cutting in a moment. I've got some vellum here and we'll have all the dimensions below as usual. And so on the vellum, you definitely wanna use a permanent ink and you do wanna give it time to dry because um, whereas the ink usually dries almost instantaneously on cardstock, vellum can take a little longer. So I'm just going to stamp right there in the so middle. So I'm showing you a little technique that I have adapted when I don't quite get my stamping done as nicely as I like. And that's when I take, what is this uh, pen called? Oh, the blender pen, yeah. The blender pen. And I'm just dabbing it in there. And just blending it in a little bit because I just was a little light-handed on that one side. That's smart. So she's just taking the blender pen to the ink pad and coloring in a little bit. That's great. Yeah. And so now I'm done. Now I'm good. All right. So here's your um, sentiment stamp and the ink pad when you were ready to stamp that. And then we'll get oh, okay. the big shot out here and we'll be ready to go. Where am I? Oh, on the vellum, right? Yes, that's All right. All right. And that... I can go clean that off. And then this is our 
stays on ink. It's nice and fresh ink. It's brand new ink. I think that's why it's so dark. <laughs> but uh, we're good. So I'm gonna put that in that sentiment. All right, so we've got our beehives and our bees. There we go. And we've also got our honeycomb. Do you wanna talk about this idea? Because this was your idea to add this on, Renee. Oh honeycomb. yeah, yeah. I thought we're gonna do um, we're gonna do it in in uh, yellow in the um, um, daffodil delight, and because we're gonna do it in the daffodil delight, I still want the honeycomb. Uh, I thought it was really kind of cool, so we're just gonna go ahead and cut out the honeycomb and then piece some of the pieces on here, which I think will be really nice. And while um, we want to clean that one off. And sure, you, do you want to take over this and I'll do some cleaning? Well, you're, you're all set. I'll do some cleaning. Okay. We're all set. So. Well, this was Renee's idea to do the three dies at once. So you can see we're being really efficient with our big shot here. <laughs> <laughs> now, I haven't used this honeycomb die. I think you have. Oh, yes. But I love how it cuts out these little honeycomb yes. hexagons as well. Which Might can save be those used. for another project. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe we'll Pop use them even out. on this one. We never know. Yeah. We're see, still yeah, in the design see how phase. That cleans that off. See how nice that is? That's great stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Stampin' Up! <laughs> you take I care of us. It. I really do. Renee, could I borrow or have you do this if you'd like? The, yes, um, I'll show you. Take how. your pick tool yes. to pop that out there? Yes. So basically, this is going to be pretty delicate, but they're beautiful. I just love them. Um, so obviously, we're going to just go ahead, go in there, and push that out. And that should come right out. There it is. Gorgeous little honeycomb. Lovely. So I will actually borrow that die. Oh, okay. the die part, here we yep. go. And run this through one more time and then I'll hand it over to you to run your dies through, how about? Okay. Unless you want to take so, over this point, you're welcome to. No, you're good, you're good. Okay. No, I'm very happy. You're very good. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we get along. <laughs> Easy going. That's right. It's all about collaboration. I do love that about crafts. It's like any art, so collaborative. All right, so I've got my two bees, I've got my two hives, and I've got my two honeycombs. Actually, I guess I only need the one honeycomb, so you can use this other honeycomb if you, you like. You think so? I, you don't wanna make, uh, okay, you think that would be it? Okay. Well, we've got enough space, we could always make I at think least one, one more, more. I think and one then we'll more. see what we end up using. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think so. We've got the strip sure. mite as well. So how about you take over the um, the big shot here, yep. and if I could have your take your pick tool, I'll work on getting this second honeycomb out. Yeah, we thought that aerial view is probably ideal, so that way you're seeing it the way we're seeing it, um, and not backwards. Yeah. But give us your feedback. We love to hear from you all what you're exactly. liking, what you're not liking, because we will collaborate with you to make it um, whatever would be best. Yep. All right, so we're done with our honeycomb dye. Thank you, honeycomb dye. <laughs> and we're almost done with our hives and our bees. Yep. So then we've got this strip. This is what we're gonna be working with next. This is in the Daffodil Delight. Um, we're considering also doing this project with crushed curry, so you could do that as well. Do you want me to take that and put that over here? Do you have some more? Yeah, here? no, I don't actually. I'll put that <laughs> over here. Um, only so much space. So yes, yeah, so you could do this with any of the yellows, um, or of course, again, our original design, my original design used the um, Golden Honey Bee, or Golden Honey, I think it is, designer series paper from Celebration. So it's just beautiful gold honeycomb and lots of other good bee patterns in that paper. If, if you are seeing this before the end of March, then that is still available to earn for free with any $50 purchase. All right, so we're done and die you cutting. Can you can show my handy dandy magnets. Oh yeah, sure. So while I put these away, you can see Renee's um, brilliant storage here. She's got her stamp set and her die set all together. And so she's gotten these magnetic strips that the dies just stick to, right? Yeah. And we've got a big roll of it for like hardly any money at all at the, all what is that called, that store? Hobby One Lobby. One of the craft stores, yep. yeah. 
All right, so now what we're gonna do is, first we're gonna take a bone folder, or this is our scoring blade from our paper trimmer. And you can see I've already scored this paper. Again, the dimensions will be in the description below. You've got a short end, and then you have a long end. And they're separated by this score line here. So on the long end, from that score line to the end of the paper, you're going to just kind of curve it because that is gonna end up being the arc of your hive. So you wanna start to just gently curl the paper. Renee's doing some trimming on her bees. <laughs> Here you can start curling, Renee. And then I'm gonna start folding on my score lines. And I might have to curl again after I fold these. Did you cur curl these. on the, which side of the where, the, where the lines are, where you folded, yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm actually the other way. So you're going to oh, curl okay. on the, yeah, on this side, okay. on your mountain side. Cause remember when you're, yeah. um, yeah, mountains and valleys folding on your score lines. Yeah. You want to turn those valleys into mountains. So you're going to be scoring on the mountain side because that's about to become the valley side when you do all your folding. Good. And again, you may have to curl it again after you fold it on your score lines. So I'm just going to fold on both those major long score lines yep. and then also the short score lines the only score lines i'm not folding on are these little ones along these long strips because those are actually just a guide for wedges that i'm going to cut out later but all the score lines that go from end to end of the paper i have folded on you might want to use your bone folder for this because it might make it easier when we're cutting and stuff right yeah it's always good to burnish all right, so yeah, I'm just gonna curl one more time. And now we're gonna need our snips to do some trimming. Or some cutting, I should say. So you're going to, on the short side of the paper, you're going to cut on the short score lines, but on the long side. So I'm looking at the long side of my paper and I'm cutting up on the score line to that perpendicular score line to create these little flaps. This is typical box building, because half of this hive is a box and the other half is like a arc. So you're gonna cut that second set of lines there. Yeah, so you're cutting the first two. So you've got one little set of flaps here. Yep. And then, and then the a big bigger flap. set of flaps here. That's right. Yep. So now we're gonna turn this end into like a box or a tray and we're gonna do that by putting glue on the outside of these small flaps and then folding them in just like that. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna flip it so I'm looking at the outside. I finally got Stampin' Up Tombow glue here. <laughs> I'm always using the sister glue as I heard you call it recently. I thought that was yes. a good name for it. <laughs> but this is probably the best glue I've ever used. Yes, uh, this is the it one is. Stampin' Up sells. I'm still using the sister right now, but <laughs> there's pros and cons. Yep. Are y'all filming? We sure are. Right now? Yes. Hey, right now. You're making a cameo. Okay, so Ooh. we're going to... Well, I'm getting the dog food. Okay. <laughs> so that was my husband. <laughs> and you heard him. <laughs> Taking care of the animals. <laughs> yeah. And always supporting our efforts here. That's right. Fellow artist. All right, so now I've got one end of my box or my drawer glued together. So now, and I've made this mistake myself, you do not want to glue the long curved end of your hive to this drawer because then it will be stuck closed. It will never open. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut those wedges. So again, I've made these score lines. These are about every inch. And those are just to guide us on cutting out little triangles. So I'm gonna cut from the end of the paper to the tip of that score line where it meets the perpendicular score line. And do that on the other side to create this little triangle wedge. And then I'm gonna pop that out. It doesn't have to be too precise because we're not gonna see it. But you wanna do that on both sides. You could do this at every half inch and then it would be even more easy to curve. But I have found that every inch has worked well enough. So that's what we're doing for now. I'm gonna have some good snips for this. That's so right. that you can use that tip of that pair of scissors. And I will say, Stampin' Up! has been the best so far for me. <laughs> yeah, you like those snips? Yeah. Good.
All right. We don't snip right here, right? That stays. No, you don't want to wedge that, yeah, because okay. that's going to go flush like that when we're done. Okay. So now this is the tedious part. It takes some patience. We're going to adhere our hives to this box base that we've created. So one at a time, we're going to take our little flaps with the wedges in between. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on one flap at a time. At least that's what I've found to be the most easy. And I liked having the box in the closed position. So instead of open like this, putting it so that that first flap is flush with the bottom of my um, box or drawer. And then I'm gonna take my first hive and line the bottom of that up as well, as well as the side. It's easiest I find if you kind of lay it down. And we're just gonna start curving that into place. Probably won't be perfect and that's okay. Handmade crafts never are and that's how you know they were handmade with love. So you wanna hold that in place for a little while until the glue dries enough to move on to the next one. Cause you are gonna be straining so, it a little bit by curling it. And so we're not just like that. So one little flap at a time. And so one little flap and that's there. all you're doing is curling it around. That's right. That's great. But yeah, we're working our way around. Yeah. This idea actually came from, um, if you are familiar with Stampin' Up! and you've been shopping the current catalogs, the mini catalog has a stamp set I think we've used before with the chick. Mm -hmm. If you've seen our cup favor video tutorial, uh, we used the chick for the baby cup and um, that part of the catalog for that stamp set has a project with the chick popping out of an egg which is so cute can't wait to try to make that another time um, and so they made basically a double-sided hive so that it was a big egg an oval cracking in half letting out the chick so I looked up how Stampin' Up! made that because when you're a demonstrator you get access to all the supply lists and brief um, instructions on how to make all the projects pictured in their catalog. So if you ever see one that you wanna try to recreate and you're curious how, what to use, you can always ask your demonstrator or reach out to us if you don't have one and we'll share that with you. But I used that and modified it to create basically half an egg with again this little door to be a hive. You might wanna use your bone folder uh, to smooth out those edges. Hannah. Oh, is that working for you? I think okay, so. Good. I think you want to show so. them how you did that? Yeah, I just went ahead once it was glued down. I went ahead and just kind of went to the edge with with each of these. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see, I went to the edge here and just kind of smoothed it around the edge here so that it kind of sticks there. My glue is not quite as sticky as hers, so. It gives me a little bit of opportunity to fix up a few little things here, and that seems to work really well. Good. Good tip. All right, so I'm starting on my second side here. Okay. And again, I feel like it's easiest to start on the side that um, attaches to the door. So instead of the open side, the closed side. Yeah. Um, just easier for lining things up. And then you work your way to that open side. Right. Try my wonderful Tombow. Oh, she's switching glues. <laughs> switching glues. Okay, so now, oh, did I do the right one? Oh, no. Yep, you're good. Well, right. you're starting on the other end, but that'll be okay. That'll be okay. What's you could that? also leave that glue wet. Um, so I started on this end, but you can start on that end if you'd like, or you can leave that glue wet and just work your way around to it. Yeah. You'll probably get there before it dries. Yeah, and I'm supposed you can always to add glue. more. Yes, yeah, I see, I see. There's so much trial and error in these things, though. That's for sure. No matter how much you calculate and, you know, That's measure it. twice, cut once, there's always yeah. some and trial you, and error. Yeah. Now, when you get down to these last couple flaps, it does get tricky because you're having to kind of reach up inside your box to put the glue. But luckily, again, if you're patient and careful, you can do that. Mine kind of slips there at the end, so now it's not lined up just right. You can kind of see the 
um, cardstock underneath peeking out. So I'm just going to do a little bit of trimming just to clean that up. Just be careful at this stage because you don't want to over trim and ruin the whole thing. That would be disappointing. <laughs> there we go. Just trim that off a little bit. I'm going to do that on this side too. So you can see where there's just a little bit of cardstock peeking out. So I'm just going to trim that off. I lucked out on that part, I think. Good, good job. All right. I'm working on some of my bumps here. Yeah, you can kind of bend those in, especially while the glue is still just a little tacky and drying. All right, so now is the moment of truth. Can we close the box? So I'll be honest, it's a tight squeeze, which you want, because you want that box to stay closed. Um, and let's see, I'm making sure I don't need to do any more trimming here. I think I might need to do just a teeny bit of trimming on this side, so let me do that real quick. You closing up, Renee? I'm Look closing at you. You up. caught up with me. I'm closing and you surpassed up. me. All right. So hers closed. Let's see if mine will. You might just have to trim just a little push bit. in here a little bit on yeah. the bottom. Yeah, that's but what then I did. You can squeeze in one corner at a time. There you go. All right. We did it. Yay! <laughs> Fun. All right. So now. We are going to add on our bees because what hive would be complete without some bees fluttering around it? Let me remember which side is my front here. So let's see, I like the look of this hive better. So, nope, I like the look of this. So oh, which one do I like better? I can't decide. Well, it makes more sense to open this side, I think. And here's um, a tip for opening it up. If you put your pointer finger and thumb on these little uh, hive yep. doors yep. that are cut out of the die, then you can usually wiggle it open a little more easily. Beautifully done, Renee. Cute. All, All right. right. So we're going to put these wherever we deem fit. Is that correct? That is correct. And, and we're going to use dimensionals, we're gonna right? We're going to use dimensionals. Yep. Okay. Now, one we do have to put strategically, and that's going to put our sentiment in place so actually hopefully our sentiment is dry mine still looks a little wet um i don't know about yours so i'm just gonna be real careful hopefully i'm not gonna yeah. ruin it here um i'm gonna slide it into this is the fancy label punch and we're not obviously punching the whole thing out because this is a much smaller strip than that punch um but we're just gonna curve the edges mine really is wet though i tell you what i'm gonna get yeah. a paper towel and try to blot it a little bit Yeah, that ink is so fresh. It's brand new ink, and I think it's just really, um, really um, either too dark or I tried to go a little lighter, and so that's what happened with mine, but uh, it usually does work fine. Oops, I was going to put it on the box already. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right, so. so I'm sliding this in, and this is going to be a little tricky because I've cut ours just right in size. Um, normally you'd have a little extra to work with here. So this is going to take me an extra minute, probably end up in bloopers. <laughs> That's okay. I got to have some bloopers to show that we are human still learning. Yes. <laughs> Always learning. I'm going to use the pick tool. And actually this isn't too bad. I'm getting it into place. Yeah. I'm just trimming up my little bees. Okay, good. trying to get this centered. I'm close. Close, so close. And it's stuck. Ooh, I can use this end of the pick tool, right? With the sticky end, maybe? Yeah, there we go. I'm thinking about getting this pick tool. Oh, yeah, I like the pick tool. I live off that pick tool. All right, <laughs> here we go. Fabulous. You ready for it? Yes, I think so. So it. we're going to just put it in at the total end. Is that what you did? The whole end, right? Yep, I just centered yeah. it in the uh, label yeah. so it curves my edges. And so then I'm going to take one of my bees. And actually, I want to curl the wings on my bees. So I'm going to use a bone folder again or this score tool and curl my bee a little bit. That's going to hide the dimensional underneath him a little bit, plus just give him even more dimension and a little bit more reality. I mean, no one's going to think this is a real bee, but still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so now that those are curled up, put my dimensional on the back. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my B to my sentiment and I'm basically pinching the sentiment between my B and my hive because you don't really want to put adhesive behind vellum. It will show through um, because vellum is that kind of frosted clear. And so I'm using the B and it's dimensional to so attach that on there. My way is to simply stick one end in. Oh, that's a good idea, right? Eh? Then stick the other end in and we should be can all Can you slide good. that up where we can see a little better? Because that's oh, brilliant. I'm just gonna stick this up in here, just the end like that, center it, get it centered. And then that's all I did on both sides. This side I did it this way, that side I did it that way. So brilliant. there we go. There we go. My, mine, mine, again, mine didn't come out as dark as I wanted. It's funny, look at that. Mine came out very dark, dark and yours came out very light. <laughs> it's, I, it's the ink. It's the stays <laughs> on. It's just very, very um, funky. A little temperamental tonight. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. We can always redo that another time. Yes. Sorry I didn't bring extra vellum for us that's to redo okay. that tonight. All right, so I've got my one bee pinching my sentiment. I'm going to put my other bee probably buzzing up the hive here. And like the original, you could tie a little bit of ribbon around this one. This was ribbon from a paper pumpkin, which worked out well. It was black with gold metallic running through there. Um, so you could wrap like the Daffodil Delight ribbon around this, or if you did it in crushed curry, the crushed curry ribbon, you could use a black. We even have a sparkly black right now available, but whatever ribbon or trim is currently available that you like. Um, but that is it. And then you would just put whatever treats or trinkets inside that you want. So that's it that's it i know i'm a little surprised i feel like we're missing something but i think we got it all oh we did forget something we forgot our honeycomb right okay so let's there you go. work on that that way this way i've got that and so the other bee you just put anywhere you like yeah i put mine going up the side you can put yours on the back of the hive wherever you like um so i'm going to trim obviously this is too big to fit so I'm gonna trim, it looks like maybe about um, two honeycomb wide will fit because this is a one inch wide box. So I'm just gonna trim along here. So Hannah and I do these videos together and um, uh, the, sometimes it's her plan sometimes it's my plan and this is her plan and uh, we enjoy working together very much mm -hmm. and uh, she is my upline she introduced me to Stampin' Up. I'm to blame. And, <laughs> and I was reluctant at first. It took her a couple of times to get me there. I was patient. <laughs> <laughs> and well worth it. Um, so but um, we have enjoyed uh, working together and mm -hmm. doing these projects. And it is, I think, because we, although we're different, we have a certain sense and we like certain kinds of things. Um, Hannah has been doing Stampin' Up! now for about three to four years. That's right. And she um, is. Uh, she's done some great projects. Didn't oh, you make a? You. Didn't you make a cutting? Um, the, I made a paper the, trimmer. Some, yes, <laughs> which you can see yeah. on her blog. You have to see That's her paper right. trimmer on her blog. And what was the other one you made? The, the little kit. Yeah. And she does the whole thing. It is great. <laughs> the the right. paper trimmer even had an arm. You've got to see these things <laughs> if you have a friend who loves crafting. Uh, you've got to check out some of her uh, creations. Now, I did use the pick tool to 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 put in those corners, and that worked out really well. Um, if you look at some of those corners, that really did it justice. So, if you get your pick tool and you just kind of patiently go in there, you can fix some of those edges up. But of course, the other nice thing is that we have the honeycomb, so that that can you know we we yeah, can yeah that can work hide some the, things yeah can work on those edges but that's great okay so our honeycomb for me well and I'm not gonna let Renee brag about me and not brag about her I mean she has really <laughs> taken this and just run with it um, and so definitely be checking out her 
posts as well because she's been inspiring me with some of the things she's been doing. Um, like I said earlier, those really fancy fold cards. I'm thinking of borrowing some of those ideas for my next events. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, definitely check her out as well. All right, so I've got some honeycomb trimmed and I'm just gonna carefully, I put teeny tiny points of glue because obviously this is a delicate die cut here. And so I'm just gonna place that on. Remember, a little glue goes a long way, <laughs> right Renee? <laughs> yes, um, and one of the things that I do, and especially if you have that uh, crafty silicone um, oh, mat. Oh, silicone craft sheet, yeah. Yeah, if you have that craft sheet, what I do, and I do it on my paper, but I regret it sometimes because I end up my hand in it. But <laughs> but this is a, uh, this works quite well, um, is I take a little spot and I put it down, and I think people do this on their craft sheets also, I'm sure. And then you just dab in there, and then you're just taking that very little bit and spreading it. And so that, that really uh, makes it easier. People do all kinds of different ways. This has worked for me really well. Um, That's a good tip, no pun intended. <laughs> that's true doing your jokes I know they're terrible <laughs> no, thanks they're for putting not. up with me folks. <laughs> no they're not they're funny you think I'm a dad but I'm not even a mom yet unless you count my cats which I do sometimes but <laughs> well I didn't know did my dog come in your dog was climbing up on me earlier oh my. <laughs> I thought he might make it in our video <laughs> Oh, so he is in. She is in, I should say. I, I think so. Yeah, oh, good. We have a dog that has a special personality. So, but uh, she's doing better and better, it seems. Okay, let's see if All I right. did this. So now right. I'm wishing I did my honeycomb before my bee because I have one piece on there, but I have one more piece I could add. So I'm actually going to see if I can peel very carefully my bee off to put some honeycomb under him. We'll see how that goes. What I decided to do is wrap it a little bit, but that's just me. Okay. I love seeing what different people do with it. It's one of the great things about this process. Everyone has a different perspective, and that's how you get inspired. So I'm just doing a little wrap around. I don't know if you guys, I don't know how this is, you know, sometimes you can see and sometimes you can't, you'll see. But I'm doing a little wrap around here with my honeycomb, so it just wraps around there. And I need a little bit more glue here and there. Although, you know what's fun hmm. is to use these. I love using these. Oh yeah, the centers. Yes, they, they are just great. You can take a center, take your little pick tool, put a dab of glue on there, Now we're just playing old having fun. That's right, just playing around. Remember, if you do get glue, just wait for it to get tacky and then you can um, use one of those adhesive erasers, removers, just really gently and it'll take that right off. My hands are getting sticky, so I need to be careful what I touch at this point, because <laughs> I could make a mess. See, Anna? Cute. See, and that works. I like that a lot. So we'll just put some of those in there. I like the uh, crushed curry, which is what we used for the honeycomb on the Daffodil Delight, which is what we used for our base. In fact, I could see stamping with the crushed curry um, and then having the crushed curry honeycomb on the Daffodil Delight Oh yes. base. Oh yeah, yes. That might be what I try next time. And with these honeycomb, I actually don't think you need the ribbon. I think this would be hidden by the ribbon, so I think maybe it's a one or the other, ideally. Yeah. Because this is such pretty detail. Definitely takes some time, but we enjoy doing this, so we don't mind the time. All right, where do I want my last one, folks? What do you think I'm thinking here? 
All right. So see, I've got the insides coming up and then it switches to the outsides. So I think that's it for me. Yes, I'm, I'm just playing around and, and uh, working on this. Uh, it's, it's going to be a work in progress. This is my first one that I made. Beautifully done though. I love the wrapping. So we'll, we'll continue this saga. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, very cute, very cute, very fun. Uh, really nice um, idea. Also, um, do you want to talk about how, what little container can fit in these also? Uh, uh, oh, you can fit those, you can make your own like lip balm. Yeah, and so that's it. probably what we're going to do for stamp camp. Right. Yeah, is make our own little beeswax lip balm. But these Burt's Bees, um, which I love Burt's Bees, that's all I yeah. use. Their beeswax balm tins fit in here. Um, so this is an older version. Renee, if you want to open yours up, yes. you have the newer version in there. Um, but both yeah. fit. It's, um, again, all the dimensions below, but it's a, a one inch wide box. And then if I had to guess, I'd say it's about an inch or two tall. Um, yeah. And so it'll fit a decent size little yeah. treat. So there's the new, yeah. slightly bigger Burt's Bees beeswax tin. Really nice. Really nice. So works really well. So should we stop the video and come back yes. on to say our goodbyes? Yes. Okay. Can you hit stop on your side there? So I hope you enjoyed our video tonight. And thanks to Hannah, we have this a wonderful <laughs> little cutesy box that will definitely take a lip balm. Definitely, probably a little, you know, they do those little candles too out of beeswax. Oh, yeah, that would be is cute. That's what I was thinking. And so that'd be very cute. It just, it'd be great in an Easter basket or something like that. So I think it's really, really cute. And I um, hope you enjoyed your time with us tonight. And it survives a fall, as I just showed. So. <laughs> so thanks as always for watching and happy crafting. Happy crafting.